Today on our 2011 Ford Fiesta, we'll be installing the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-154, as well as the Roadmaster 4-Wire Connector Vehicle End, part number RM-910030-1. In the final part, we will be using the Bent Electrical Bracket, part number RM-910030-5. To begin with, we will go ahead and open up the hood of the vehicle. Next we need to kind of plan out our routing for the wire that we will run from the front of the vehicle all the way to the back of the vehicle as we will be making wiring connections with our rear tail lights. Now we'll go ahead and begin by routing our wire down to the center of the vehicle on the lower fascia. Be sure when routing your wire down to the center of the lower fascia that you leave a little extra for potential future connections or if you want to change a style plug, which we'll be doing later in the video. Once we have our wire routed down to the front, as well as through the engine compartment, we'll use a few zip ties to help secure it and keep it in place. Because we're also not going to need the other end of the four flat at the rear of the vehicle, we went ahead and cut it off to make pulling the wire a little bit easier. Now you'll also notice we use an old section of red airline tubing to help fish the wire through. Now that we've got the wire pulled down underneath the vehicle, we'll go ahead and route it along where some existing lines run to the back. Making sure that we zip tie it along the way, keeping it away from any moving parts, sharp objects, or any areas that may become hot and damage the wire. Now that we've got the wire run to the back of the vehicle, now we need to find a location that we can route it into the rear of the trunk. To do this, you'll need to remove the center threshold. There are some clips that hold the top center down, as well as three push pins on the inside that hold it in place. Use a flathead screwdriver or a body fastener removal tool. Once you have this out of the way, each of the side carpeting has two push pins that'll also need to be removed so you can peel the carpeting back to gain access to the wire as well as the rubber boot. As you'll see here, we found a rubber grommet that we'll be able to put a small slit in and pull the four flat through. To accomplish pulling the four flat wire through it, we're gonna go ahead and use the air tube again and push it down through the grommet and tape it off to the four flat. Now that we've got the wire pulled to the back of the vehicle, we're going to go ahead and use a small section of the wire loom that's supplied with the kit. As you will notice, we also use some electrical tape to help secure the wire loom around the wire. Now we're going to need to go ahead on the factory wiring harness and remove some of the protective coating. You'll need to use a test light and probe the wires while someone runs light functions to figure out which wire does which. Now on the driver's side here, the green and blue wire is the turn and brake signal and the purple and green are the running lights. Now we'll go ahead and move over to the passenger side and repeat the process. On this side, the blue and orange wire is the brake and turn, and the orange and white wire is the running lights. These are the wires that we'll be making our connections with the diodes. Now before we make any cuts to the wire, we're going to go ahead and kind of plan out how we're going to route it. If at all possible, since we came up on the driver's side, we're going to try to keep the green wire intact as it'll be run over to the passenger side. Next we'll measure out and cut off the excess brown and yellow wires from our four pole and use this extra wiring to make a pair of jumper wires. These will go from the factory plug to the diodes in and out plugs. We'll then split the yellow and brown wires, pulling them apart at the ends and stripping them back. We'll add two buck connectors to the ends of the jumpers. Now we'll cut our wires that we'll be using on the vehicle's harness and strip back both of these as well. We'll connect our first jumper, the brown wire, to the running light on the vehicle going towards a plug. We'll repeat this for the yellow wire to the brake and turn wire on the vehicle. Once those are crimped down, we'll wrap them up with some electrical tape. Now we're ready to adhere our diodes into place. We'll find a good spot for them, peel back the adhesive on the back, and stick them into place. With that done, we'll measure out from the jumper we made for the plug and the diodes, again cutting off the excess and stripping back the ends. 
On these ends, we'll add spade terminals for the diodes. These will be plugged into the out portion of the diode, which goes towards the tail light. Again, we'll wrap these up with a little electrical tape. With this done, we'll now plug these into the out portion of the diode. From the excess yellow and brown wire we cut earlier, we'll make a second set of jumper wires, this time coming from the other side of the vehicle plug, which will be connected to the inside of the diode. Again, we will have yellow butt connectors on one side and spade plugs on the other. We'll first connect them to the vehicle's harness, then plug them into the diode. With our vehicle's driver's side harness taken care of, we'll now move on to the four pole wire we routed from the front. We'll take the brown and yellow wires from that, strip them back, and add the appropriate spade terminals. Once the spade terminal is on the yellow wire, we'll go ahead and plug it into the end portion of the diode. The brown or running light wire from the harness is a bit different. We'll take the rest of the excess of our brown and yellow wires, completely splitting them apart. We'll discard the yellow wire and take the extra brown wire and strip back the end. We'll then splice this with the brown wire from the four pole, placing the special yellow spade terminal that came with the diode kit. The extra brown wire will be run to the passenger side with the green wire. Our final step on the driver's side will be to attach the ground wire to the frame. We'll cut off the excess white wire and add a ring terminal. We'll then use a self-tapping screw to attach it to the frame. With all that done, we'll move over to the passenger side and repeat these steps with the green and brown wires. We'll start by placing the diodes in the proper locations, add spade terminals to the green and brown wires, We'll then cut our vehicle wires and place the appropriate jumpers on them. In this case, the green wire will be to the turn and brake signal, and the brown wire will again be for the running lights on the passenger side. With our diodes connected and tail lights plugged back in, we can now test our functions to make sure everything is working before we put our trunk area back together. Everything looks good, we can now reassemble the trunk area. Now if you remember earlier, we went ahead and just left a little extra of the 4-flat up on the vehicle. This particular vehicle does not need the 4-flat wiring, instead they need the round 4-pin, so that's why we're going to install the part number RM-910030-1. To do this, we'll need to go ahead and cut the 4-flat off on the front and find a suitable location to mount our mounting bracket. As you will see here, we were able to use a couple self-tapping screws into the bottom of the license plate bracket. With the bracket installed, now we're ready to do our wiring. You want to go ahead and remove the center part of the plug by removing the small Phillips head screw and pushing the interior out. Now on this particular vehicle, we're going to wire the plug where if you're looking straight at it so you see the pins and the nut that we removed the screw from earlier is on top, We'll be wiring the yellow to the top left, the green to the top right, the white or the ground to the lower left, and the running light or the brown to the lower right. After you've stripped back your four flat wiring a little bit, go ahead and make the connections. You want to make sure that you fish the wire through the housing as well as the bracket before you make any of these connections. Once you have all your connections made, go ahead and slide the plug back into the housing. Now we're ready to go ahead and make our connection to the bracket. Now that we've got our plug and our bracket mounted together, we'll go ahead and use a couple zip ties to help secure up any excess wire that's still located behind the fascia. And with that, that'll complete the installation of the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-154 on our 2011 Ford Fiesta.